Hey everyone, it's me Anderson West, you know Mark Kuchewski on this side. We're back for another episode of the podcast. We've been off for a little while because we've been busy making our short films, which is what we want to talk about in this episode. Mark's just had the premiere for his film, Exercising Barry, starring Anne Hegarty. And he's just premiered it over the last week, had an event, and, you know, been on the BBC, featured on the BBC website as well. Um, but yeah, Mark is going to talk a little bit about that, and I'm going to ask him questions. And then after, we're going to talk about my film that I've been developing, that's 7x7x7, seven times seven times seven, a short film that I've had in development for, for far too long. But anyhow, we're going to get into it. So, Mark, tell me a little bit about why you made Exercising Barry and, you know, how you feel about it to get it finally finishing out there. Um, why did I make it? So, firstly, why why do we all make short films? It's to get your ideas out there and show people what you can do a lot of the time. Um, someone asked me recently if short films, if you make money from it, and I'm, I was <laughs> like, no, you never you never make money from short films. It's a it's something that you do. It's basically something that you do to prove that you can do the job and do it well. So that's why I made it, and then. The particular film, Exercising Barry, came about because, as you well know, I love horror films and I love comedy horror. And I had worked with Ryan and Josh on one of their previous films um, in a grading capacity. I'd colour graded it and um, my partner Natalie had worked with them on a short film. And I thought they were really good together in the film. They had really good chemistry so it kind of inspired me to write something and I'd been thinking about this idea of an exorcism for quite some time and I think English people do comedy well and I think that you have this kind of attitude that can lend itself to comedy horror which is this kind of ignore it keep moving on attitude that you kind of only get in Britain and I think when you blend that with horror you get some really great results. I mean, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, there's, it just works. So it's always been a genre that I'm kind of drawn to. And when someone comes along or something that inspires you to kind of write something down and they're passionate about it, then you end up making it and trying to bring it as close to what you'd imagined as possible. And I think we did that with this. I think it's pretty close to what I'd had in my head. That's great, man. I mean, I know we've been talking about the film for a little while. Um, you know, I wasn't able to make it to shoot. Um, we know why. But <laughs> I wasn't able to make it. And but I, what I really loved about the film was just like, yeah, that that's a great way of sur- sur- summing it up. Really, you know, just to kind of yeah, this is just life, <laughs> and we're gonna talk about this. Just <laughs> can't, you know, just like oh yeah, nonchalantly. The you know my <laughs> your husband's <laughs> vomited on me. I'm gonna come out of the house now. Sorry, spoiler. Uh, but like, and I just, yeah, I do love that. And, I, you know, you've had that style. You know, obviously I'm thinking of happy anniversary, a bite to eat. You know, we're seeing that style progress over, mm. over the, you know, over each and every film. And I think even going back to Falling, you know, I know Falling wasn't so much of a comedy, but it was like more like a lighthearted, dark, dark, I don't want to say comedy, but it kind of is. Yeah, kind of, it is yeah, comedy. it is. It was, it was kind yeah, of comedy. It was, it, was. it was a different style for me because it was a romantic dark comedy. Yes, um, that's But it's, it's every, every time I end up doing something dark, there's always humor involved. It's rare that I would make a film that was entirely horror. It's always, comedy is always the kind of thing that comes through, I think. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, you know, I think that's your personality. You know, you're a very humorous guy, funny guy. You know, uh, you know, you go, you, you love a good laugh. You're very cheeky. <laughs> you know, it just came into my mind. I'm, you know, it just came to my mind. You know, you're going to know, you're going to know the bandit from Keswick, you know, the, <laughs> uh, you, you know, no, you were, anyways, sorry, we digress. So let's get back to this. Let's get back to the topic. <laughs> you know, with the film, obviously it's a different, you know, you working with, with, uh, you know, a celebrity, it's a bit different. Um, how did you find that experience working with Anne? And, you know, what do you think it added to the film? Anne had wanted to do a bit more acting and she'd worked with Josh, who was one of the other stars in the film. And it was kind of a bit of luck and a bit of who you know that 
kind of work together, which is often kind of how things come together a lot in this industry. And it just so happened that we were lucky enough that Anne was looking to do a bit more acting at the point at which we had this film. So I'm very grateful that she came on board um, to work with us because she'd never worked with any of us before. And I think comedy is a tough one. You know, it's very easy to do comedy bad. And I think you have to put a lot of trust as an actor into the person that you're working with, um, especially in comedy. So I co-directed the film with my partner, uh, Natalie Paling, and she's an actor. That's her background. She comes from acting. So when we were working together on set, Natalie was very good at kind of knowing how actors work and knowing what they need to get the best out of them. But it still is just a lot of trust and, you know, being willing to try things. And the way that we shot this film was in a way that we could try things, you know, um, to make that easy, that process easy. Because I think with comedy, it, a lot of it is reactional and it's good to try new things. And with filmmaking, you know that you've, you're often cutting a lot of angles together. So if you're changing things, then it can sometimes restrict that editing process. So we had to figure out a way that we could basically shoot and, you know, still have it work in the edit. So we picked our angles carefully and, and that meant that the actors, they got to try a bunch of things. And I think Anne really threw herself into just being willing to try, like try anything. You know, there wasn't anything we suggested that she wouldn't have a go at. And she also brought a lot of, you know, good ideas and she was just really enthusiastic about getting something funny. And that's really important. I think, from, you know, the whole team, really, to, to just be open to let that happen. So, yeah, I'm very grateful that she she trusted us and that she, you know, worked as hard as she did. And I think that you can kind of tell that Anne is just naturally funny. She's She's got that humour anyway. So, so it was, it just, I think Anne and comedy work really well together. I'm sure she can do lots of other things. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed watching her and working with her on this film. I loved um, reading the, your article uh, when she was saying about I'd love to be in a Marvel film or James Bond. I mean, I'm not good at yeah. she's like I'm, I'm not good at the action part, but I'll be good at telling people <laughs> what to do. And you can definitely, you can definitely yeah. see it. Obviously, from the TV show she's on, she has that personality. Yeah. Um, but like, she, sorry, she'd be a great M or a Q, don't you think? An M or a Q in James Bond, I think they would just be. Great roles for us. Just telling, just telling people start, off. Be like, start, why did you do that? Start a little campaign. <laughs> yeah, a little hashtag. And for and for James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned working with Natalie there. Natalie's an experienced filmmaker as well. You know, you know, she's made mm -hmm. several short films. What was that dynamic like working with your partner on set? Um. Well, I think firstly, wh whoever you work with, you just need to be on the same page. You know, you don't want to arrive at the shoot and then realize that you've got entirely different ideas. So I wrote this. I wrote the script and um, and we were just we made sure that we were on the same page. So we talked about the film. We talked about the style. We talked about influences and watched films that, you know, were a big influence for me. I think of films like. It's kind of an underrated, probably one of my favourite movies, to be honest. The Burbs, which is, an, I think it's late 80s, early 90s. Tom Hanks lives on this suburban street and he believes that his next door neighbours are, are murderers. And I love that kind of, that feeling that movies created back in the 90s, 80s, where they made family films that also had quite a dark nature to them. And... There's something about that world that I really love because it's it's almost got its it's still got its toe in reality, but it's also, you know, in firmly in the kind of uncomfortable horror element as well. And Natalie loves those films. So we watched a lot of those films and we talked about um, you know, giving actors that time, like I said, to try things out and and she's just she's just got the the secret actor know that of how to talk to actors. I think it's always a tough one as a director because sometimes you know what you want to say, but you also don't want to just be blunt. You don't want the actor to be thinking about something specific. You might just need them to go a bit quicker, but you don't want to say, do it quicker because there's, you know, you learn with actors that there's certain ways that some actors might want to 
be communicated to and stuff and it's complicated and it's difficult and figuring out how certain people work is part of the job so instead of telling an actor to do it quicker you might say you know pretend that there's a taxi outside waiting for you you know something yes, like that that, yes. that gets gets what you want without just um being so on the nose so they're not just thinking about doing it quicker so having her on board to kind of look at those elements because i also shot the movie so i'm doing another job as well um so my attention is half on that and then half on directing so i know how the film's got to come together and i know the style and the tone that we want and we would dip in with with notes and stuff like that together but we were just always on the same page and and it's probably my most pleasant experience directing because it really is just you know really nice to have someone there and if you're both on the same page then it just helps you stay on track to keep your vision you know you you mentioned obviously you shot the film as well uh you know congratulations on that you're an experienced director of photography now, you know, doing those dual roles. I think that's really interesting that you did have Natalie there to do a lot of the, you know, I won't say heavy lifting, but, you know, to really collaborate with you when you directed. Because, again, your mind is thinking, OK, I know I got to I know how this is going to come together. I know this is going to be framing, you know, how, you know, how, what the performances need to be like. But it's those little granular details that when you're thinking about, okay, the light's here, got to frame it this way. Is that in focus? I think, oh, man, the is it in focus just throws you off whatever's happening in frame other than is those is peaking hitting their beards or, or faces so much that you just it really takes you out of it. Um, but how did, how did you how did you find that, you know, shooting the movie? Did you do anything particular? you know how did you light it how did you light it what did you use did you go for natural lighting and just shape it how was it yeah it was a lot of it was outside all outside so a lot of it was natural lighting and we just shaped it it was you know putting in negative flag air flags or some kind of bounce or something like that and it was quite a flat day for both days it was cloudy which is probably better as you know like sunlight is great but if it's in the wrong place it's doing the wrong thing it can be hard it can be blowing your highlights out the houses that we live in around here are all white houses so you know if the sun hits those you're just gonna have a blown out backdrop which is never a good thing we're quite lucky where we're positioned um where you know we shot the film that the sun actually dips over the houses about midday so we would start a bit later and because it was summer, we could run a bit later to just make, give us a chance to push that sun out of the way. And that helped that, then it was mainly shaping. But it is really tough to to try and do all of those things. You know, I'm watching the take, I'm filming the take. Like you said, I'm checking it's in focus. And it can be tough because you want to, you know, the last thing I want is for something to be out of focus when we nailed it. Yeah. That's not yeah. not some, yeah. something I want. But we were shooting on anamorphic for this. And because of the tone of it, which is the idea is horror. The setting is horror. What's around it and the style is comedy. So I wanted something that blended film with a natural feeling. So I went for anamorphic. But I didn't go sh super shallow. You know, I left the depth of field. So we had a decent depth of field. I shot around F4 for the majority of the film to just keep the vast majority of it set in, you know, reality because the actors were going to be moving. They were going to be interacting with each other and stuff. And it was it just felt more realistic to do it like that. And then there were certain elements where, you know, we would shoot at a much lower F, much wider open F stop and have it shallower for those scenes like the intro, which was all slow motion. You know, the guys looking funky as they walk up the road. That was all slow motion. But, but we shot that glasses. on a different day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the intro to the character had that style a little bit more than the, the film um but it but yeah it was it was just being you know sensible with how how you do things we shot things slightly wider with this because there were multiple characters and also when they're doing different takes i knew there were some sections we were just probably going to hold on the take for quite a while so we could try lots of things with those takes because i knew i wasn't having to cut out of it um 
So it was being prepared with those. It was just careful planning. And I've shot like loads of stuff. I've made loads of films by now. So you, you know, you use things to your advantage. You do things that you know you can do. And then you try some things you, you know, you might not be so like have so much experience with. So you're always learning, but you always want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're bringing what you've learned to, to the next film you make. So there was a lot of just what I'd learned over the years from films that I've made, films I've worked on. And yeah, you, you make it doable on yourself. You don't want to give yourself too much to do because otherwise you're just going to be ticking boxes rather than being able to make sure you've got the best version of what you're trying to get right there. You know what? Yeah, that's a, that's, that's the thing. And it's about having that team, you know, and that team around you to just to help support you. Now, I know you've, you, you know, uh, you know, a bite to eat was, a, you know, you shot in a soundstage, you know, had a large crew. What was the crew like for this project? You know, you, you know, if you want to name drop them, you know, you can. But, you know, what were the crew like and, you know, what were the different roles you had on set? So we had a very small crew for this. Like, I'm going to talk about just my team for now, like the the technical crew. And then we'll I'll talk about like the uh, the rest of the crew. So for me, I had one AC who was... Tom, he was called Tom Ellis. He, I work with Tom. He's a great operator, um, just solid on shoot. You know that when you're a DP and you're doing the camera work as well, you need someone solid there because you don't have a lot of time between those two roles. So when you change lens, you want someone there with the lens ready. You know, you don't want to be sat waiting for someone to then go and get a lens and come back. And then Tom was just, you know, on top of his game. He knew what he was doing. He's he was just ready every time. You know you need him. You just you call out Tom, and he's somewhere close <laughs> to you with whatever you need. <clears throat> then as the gaffer and Spark, because we didn't have any Sparks, so the gaffer was also you know doing all the lighting. And that's Stu. We all know Stu by now. He's been featured on your YouTube channel many a times, Stu. and and mine. Stu Swindle. He's a he's a true trooper, and he's a great gaffer. And he's you know. When you want, when you build a team, you obviously want people that are pleasant as well, yeah. and good to be around. And and yeah, those two guys were super good to be around. And obviously, um, it was unpaid, so obviously expenses and everything were covered. So it's not always easy to get crew. And you know, those guys did me a massive favor, and they come and helped me out. So, um, you one thing you always try to do, or I always try to do, is make sure that you kind of pass that on or give it back. So. Both you and I have done many a, a free shoot throughout our lifetime where you're trying to help people out. And, you know, and I'm always open to that for me. I'm always open to working for free. You know, if someone hasn't got money, they haven't got money. And if it's a good idea and you want to help them, then I think go for it. So that was just my crew. That was the only camera crew. And then we had uh, Carl on sound um, and he was sound recordist and boom. And then we had... um. Katie, who was our um, AD, who essentially runs the shoot. So they, you know, tell people what's going on, what's coming next, make sure you're on track. And then we had, um, we had a few others that were behind the scenes crew, stills photography, but like the actual on shoot crew, there was probably just those four people. I, I don't think there was, a, we didn't have makeup or costume. That was when you're trying to pull something together quite small, you've got to pick up those roles. Yeah. It's not that they don't get done. You're still doing them. It's just that you have to pick them up. So production design, you know, you're looking at the set. How are you going to design the set? Is there anything you can get? Costume, you're finding costumes. And we did get help uh, producing this film by Ryan and Josh. They co-produced it, who were in the film, the two, two, cast, uh, two main cast members. So they were on top of a lot of things as well, getting crew, that kind of thing. So... It helps when you're trying to bring it together if you've got producers on board to, to help you bring it together. Otherwise, it's probably the director doing it or the vast majority of it by themselves, as as you well know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, you know, you got it's whatever it needs to get done. And ultimately, yeah, you want to have a yeah. professional looking shoot and a professional run shoot at all times, yeah. of course. Right. You know, we don't want to do things sloppy or be dangerous or anything like that. But there's also, mm -hmm. you have to get that balance right of, 
okay, we, you know, if the money's just not there, you're grateful for people's time, yeah. but you sometimes have to make little yeah. compromises a little bit, but like ultimately the performances and the comedy is what people are coming to watch the film for. And it's got great visuals. You know, if I told, you know, if you, you could have lied on the, on the, on the credits and said, Oh, AC focus pull or all these kind of things. And people would, you wouldn't know, you know, so sometimes you have mm-hmm. to kind of, you have to kind of work a bit smart to kind of achieve what you need to achieve. Yeah. Because ultimately, you know, after this as a festival run and does well online, no one's going to go back and say, oh, well, he didn't use a second AC and, you know, focus puller. So I'm not going to take this film seriously. It's like, well, no, it's mm. it's a film that's got you, you know, you know, winning awards. That, and, that, and ultimately, that's what counts, the story and, you know, yeah. getting it getting it done to that really good standard. And that really entertains people. And I, I really think you, I think, mm-hmm. I know you you achieved that 100%, man. You should be proud of it. You should be proud of it. Thank you. you should be proud of it. I, what, what's your, what's your, what's your long-term plans for the film? You know, festival run and then whatever, or are you thinking straight online maybe or what? No. So it's already been entered into several festivals all across the UK because I think the main benefit a lot of the time with festivals is actually going to the festival and meeting people and talking to people that have seen your film. So if you can go off and fly around the world and go to festivals, then that's great. But I just don't have the budget for that. Um, So I have targeted mainly British film festivals, but I probably will do some others. Um, And for the next year or so, it'll go off and just go hopefully go to some of those festivals submitting to festivals it's a lot of rejection but you know you do get into some and some films do better than others so you're always hopeful i think going in that you know this is going to be the one that that does well and i think be smart with your festival submissions as well you know this is a comedy horror so i am targeting those festivals that do specifically comedy um but comedy horror because it's way more comedy than it is horror so you know just be smart with where you're submitting it to as well. Like I've submitted to Manchester because a lot of the cast and crew are from Manchester. So, you know, you hope that that might benefit you as well. And obviously having someone who's a name in there and, you know, you hope that that will help as well. That's not why you do it, but that's, you know, one of the the hopeful things that that come from it. So that's what's going to happen to it uh, in the in the short term and then long term it will go online and it'll be free for everyone to watch and that's another exciting moment because that's you know you release it online and you hope that people will watch it and they'll share it and they'll enjoy it and that's kind of the 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 final thing that you do with it and then obviously i think with most people that make short films the long-term goal is feature feature film so and if this film does well then it makes sense that tonally your feature film might be something like this exactly. because yeah. if someone believes that you if you've done this well then you've proved that you've done this well yeah it doesn't then prove that i can go and make an action film well or at least that's what most people will assume so it's always good to be mindful about the films that you're making and and if that's what you want to be doing um long term because that's what essentially the film is if it's successful is going to do it's going to prove that you can do that so yeah feature film i'm writing the fe- a feature film now it's not it's not a longer version of exercising barry but it's exactly the same tonally so um that's the the future goal is feature films mm, mm. you know you, that's a great point about festivals yeah with short film it is hard because essentially it's a calling card you know and i've had other directors tell me it's like well do you want to spend six eight months getting a short film off the ground or getting it and making it or try and develop a feature in that time. And you kind of go, well, how, how can you do that? But then at the same time, if you haven't got work to show you can make a feature length in terms of that stone and style, then you, you won't get the job. You won't, you won't, you won't succeed. So shorts are a really integral part of a filmmaker's, a filmmaker's life, a director, writer's life. I really think it is, um, you know, and it's a great point. You know, if you want to make something else, don't then, if you want to make, an action film, you know, you want to pitch for those. Make make an action short to show people you can do it. Mm, yeah. So yeah, you know, exercising, exercising, exor, exorcising Barry. You know, um, it's gonna have a good festival run. Really happy for it, Mark, and you know, you should be proud of it. Okay, so it's just in. You know, pretend 
blessing of the house and then we can go? Yeah, yeah, in blessing the house and um, quick exorcism. I did make a small remark about my mother sitting on his face in hell, but I think it's probably just the possession. Yeah. You're throwing up on me again! A lot of noise coming from next door. Coma, nice, Ron. I've never seen you in church. I'm from another one. He's just talking in those, those weird tongues. Maybe yeah, that's a bit weird. He knows things about me, thinks he couldn't know. Barry! 